Hello and welcome back to this last example. What we're going to be doing for this example is something a little bit different. This is kind of like a backwards question. We're being given a whole bunch of information above, so specifically that we have some kind of a building that has a major occupancy of office. We have a floor area for this specific floor that we're looking at, unknown floor of 4,850 meters squared. The exit width, we're being told, must be 1,100 millimeters. That's the minimum. And we're being told that the risers for the stairs are 190 millimeters. So risers are the vertical dimensions of each step, 190 millimeters. What we're being asked in this kind of backwards question, based on what we've done so far, is to calculate the number of exits required given this scenario. So we're going to use what we've learned so far from the lecture video, the course notes, and the other examples to figure out how many exits, what's the smallest number of exits that we must use for this question. So let's do that. I've come up with a totally made up number of steps that we're going to be using for this. We're going to be using six steps as shown right here. I'm just going to clean things up a little bit just to make sure that they still make sense. So we have three, uh, six steps here, and some of them will hopefully look very familiar to you. We've used similar steps here in some of the other questions. These steps are 100% made up. They're convenient for me, and they help me keep track of everything that I need to do for questions like these. You can use whatever method works best for you, as long as you show all your work and all relevant building code references. So let's start with step number one, which is determining whether or not this building, or at least the floor area that we're identifying, is covered under part three or part nine of the Ontario Building Code. Because that tells us then, right, where to find all relevant information to solve this question. To figure out whether a building is part three or part nine, the best way that I recommend doing this is to use the requirement under sentence 1.3.3.1. That's 1.3.3.3.1, uh, which gives you three conditions to identify a part nine building. If even one of these three conditions fails, automatically not a part nine, it's a part three building. So the first one is a building uh, that has to be no more than three stories right here. Well, based on the information that I'm seeing here, I uh, can't tell, right? There's no information about number of stories, so I can't do anything with this one here. Let's try the next one. Floor area, building area of 600 square meters or less. Our building, uh, look at this, floor area 4,850. Definitely more than that. That means automatically this is a part nine building. I don't even have to look at anything else. Automatically, this is a part three building. Amazing. We're done with step number one. We can now move on to step number two. Under step number two, we're going to use what we learned in topic two to identify the major occupancy for this building. The major occupancy for this building, if you remember, because we're new at this, please, my dear students, start with Appendix A to identify what the uh, group and division as necessary is for this building, and then go to Table 3.1.2.1 to find out what the name of that major occupancy is. So I went to Appendix A under Sentence 3.1.2.1 one right here. And I found that for an office building, the major occupancy is D. And then when I go to table 3.1.2.1, I find that the name of that major occupancy is business and personal services. Great. We're done with step two. Let's move on to step number three. Under step number three, we have to use what we learned in topic four to figure out the occupant load. Occupant load is fancy building code speak for how many people are using that, st that space, okay? So it's based on the floor area, as you can see here, and it's the ratio between the floor area and the occupant load factor that's obtained from table 3.1.17.1. So I'm going to figure that out. The area is 4,850 meters squared. And from table 3.1.17.1, 
For a D major occupancy office space, the occupant load factor is 9.3 meters squared per person. So when I calculate that number, I get 521.5054 blah, 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 blah. Okay. Because human beings are a whole number, we always round up because this number means more than 521. And the smallest whole number that is more than 521 is 522. Awesome. We now have, according to step number three, the occupant load for this space. Let's move on to step number four. For step number four, we have to determine what the number of exits is going to be based on the information we have here. Okay, just based on the geometry and the occupant load, what we have here. So since this is a D major occupancy, and because we're looking at the width of stairs, Okay, and the number of stairs, the appropriate location in the Ontario Building Code where to get this information is under Clause 3.4.3.21c, which says that the minimum width for each person is going to be 9.2 millimeters. Okay, so that's where the occupant load comes into play. Okay, so the total width of all stairs put together it would be the occupant load of 522 people times 9.2 meters uh, millimeters per person. And what that gives us is 4,802.4 millimeters. This number here, I would typically just round it up to the nearest millimeter. And this is the 0.3, like that. And this here is the width of all exits, right? Assuming that all people come out of just one exit, right? All 522. So to figure out the number of exits required, we're then gonna take this total width of just one exit, but because we're told that each exit needs to be 1100 millimeters, I'm gonna take that right here and put it in the denominator. So I'm going to take 4,803 divided by 1,100 millimeters. And what I get, best two out of three, is 4.36 exits. Now, this means more than four exits. Okay? So what you do is you have to round up to five. You don't round down the number of exits because then you're not serving all 522 people. So what we get is based on this information we have right here, we need at least five exits. That's step number four. Let's move on to step number five. For step number five, we have to use the number of exits that we calculated right here, and we have to compare it against the smallest number that the building code says you must have for this kind of situation. So the appropriate location in the building code where to find the minimum required number of exits is under sentence 3.4.2.11, which says that the minimum number of exits you must have is two. So what does that tell us? We find that the 522 people require five exits. We find that the building code says you have to have at least two exits, so let's move on to step number six to determine what the final answer is to this question. So let's summarize again. The number of exits to accommodate 522 people is five. The minimum number of exits according to the Ontario Building Code for this situation is two. So what you do is you pick the larger one of these values right here, and the final answer is five exits. And there you go. We're finished with this question and you got this. I hope that helps.